Hi everybody, Jonathan here. In this video, I'll be giving you my take on section 6.4, which is about work. Now, work is a physics notion, and it's a type of energy. In particular, it's the type of energy required to move things. Now, in high school physics, you're taught that work is force times distance. So this is when an object is moved in a straight line by applying a constant force to it. Now that we know a little bit of calculus, however, we can consider work in more complicated situations. So one of the main situations considered in section 6.4 is when an object is moving along a straight line and a force is being applied to it, but the force is changing based on the position of the object. Now assuming that the force is given by f of x, and that is a continuous function, then we can use the classic idea of calculus of finding an approximate solution and turning that into an exact solution. So what we're going to do is we divide our interval, a, b, up into n subintervals, and over the i sum interval, we choose a sample point x i star, and since the function f is continuous, we assume that the force will be constant over that subinterval and equal to f of x i star. And since the width of each subinterval is delta x, this means that the work required to move the object through that subinterval is going to be approximately f of x i star delta x. So we can get an approximation simply by adding up all those f of x i star, to star delta x's for each subinterval, and we'll get a nice approximation for the total work. And by taking a limit as n goes to infinity, this will turn into an exact answer, which we can, and this will turn into an exact answer, which we can calculate with an integral. And we get that work is therefore the integral from a to b of f of x dx. There is another type of work problem that we consider in this section uh, that we can also solve using calculus. In this other type of work problem, some substance is being moved. However, it's a substance that's pretty uniform, like, but it's something that can be moved bit by bit. So something like water, sand, oil, rope. It's not like you're picking up an entire block of concrete when you pick up a thing of sand. It's like you can just pick up the upper bits and then pick up the lower bits and do that bit by bit to get the whole thing moved. Now in this setting, you can solve, use calculus to solve these work problems. However, every single one of these problems is going to have to be solved by setting up a Riemann sum. There is no nice formula, like there was for the other type of problem, where work was just the integral from a to b of f of x dx. Instead, every single time you solve one of these problems, you're going to have to do it with a Riemann sum. So one of the most common types of these problems is water pumping problems. In these problems, we've got water filling some kind of basin, and the basin can be all sorts of different shapes. It might be rectangular. In this case, it's a cone, and we'll do another example in a moment where it's a half of a sphere. And usually we want to pump all the water out of the basin. Now the water at the very surface of the basin only has to go up a tiny bit to be pumped out. However, the water at the very bottom of the basin has to be pumped up quite far. Now in this type of problem, the way we're going to solve it is we are going to split up the interval over which we have water, so it's a vertical interval here, into subintervals. So for example, we can take the entire basin and split it up into five subintervals like so. So the idea now being is that everything in each layer is at about the same height and therefore has to be pumped out about the same distance. Now to make things a little bit simpler, technically each of these slabs of water indicated here is something we call a frustrum, but it'll be easier if we approximate it with a cylinder. So we can approximate each of those with a cylinder, and cylinders are nice because they're pretty easy to calculate the volume of, it's just the base times the height, and the base is, has area pi r squared, so it's just pi r squared times the height. And then we can calculate how far each of these cylinders has to get pumped up to be at the top, and use that to find the work to empty the basin. So for example, suppose we've got a water-filled basin, and it's the shape of a hemisphere of radius 5 meters. And we're just going to imagine that they've got to clean the basin out, so all the water needs to be pumped out. 
So how much work will it take to pump out the basin? So we do need to know the mass of the water, and we can get that by using the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. So if we know the volume of some amount of water, we can calculate its mass by multiplying the volume by the density. And furthermore, we're going to use the formula for a hemisphere of radius, fi radius 5 is z equals minus the square root of 25 minus x squared minus y squared. We have this minus because we want the bottom half of a sphere so that it will hold water. Now, I made this GeoGebra activity to try and illustrate what we need to do in order to solve this problem. So there's our bottom half of a sphere. However, what we're going to do is calculate distances to the top. And we usually like the variable to be x. So I made the x-axis be this vertical axis. And then the z-axis is pointing straight out of the screen, and the y-axis is going from left to right. So that makes then the formula for this lower half of the sphere to be y equals minus the square root of 25 minus x squared minus z squared. So now we're going to imagine that we've got a thin horizontal slice of the water in the basin. And I made this little slider so that you can visualize nicely a thin horizontal slice. I'll get rid of the hemisphere too. So there's the thin horizontal slices. And we just have to calculate the work to calculate each of those horizontal slices out. Well, technically, we'll thicken it a little bit so it's actually a cylinder and not just a slice. So we're going to assume that this slice here actually has height delta x. And that means it's going to have to be pumped out a distance of minus xi, because that's the distance up to the zero coordinate at the surface. So now we just have to calculate the volume of our slice. Well, since the base of our slice is a circle, we just have to get the radius. And if we look, if we project into the xy plane, we see that the radius is just this distance over to the circle. So projecting into the plane just means we set z to be 0. So that means that this half circle here has formula y equals minus the square root of 25 minus x squared. So at a typical x value xi, the radius is going to be the square root of 25 minus xi squared. So that means that the volume of this little slice is going to be pi times that radius squared times the height, which is delta x. So it's going to be pi times the quantity of 25 minus xi squared times delta x. It's kind of nice that we squared the square root to get the square root to go away. As I noted earlier, this now has to be pumped up a distance of minus xi. And the density of the water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, which means that the mass is going to be 1,000 times this volume we calculated earlier. So therefore, the work to pump that little slice out is going to be wi equals minus xi times 1,000 pi times the quantity of 25 minus xi squared times delta x. Now the total work we get is by taking the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to n of minus xi times 1,000 pi times 25 minus xi squared times delta x, which we can now easily turn into a definite integral. That is equal to the integral from minus 5 to 0 of minus x times 1,000 pi times 25 minus x squared dx. Now, of course, that's not the final answer. However, but at this point, I'm sure you can all very easily calculate this integral because it's just a polynomial. Just multiply this minus x through and integrate the polynomial and plug in your values, and you'll have your answer.